The gun control debate is heating up after the Colorado shootings, but on Capitol Hill, debate is not going to turn into any action, at least during this election year. Democratic and Republican congressional leaders say there are no plans to take up the gun issue right now. Still, though, there's a new call from some Democrats to ban those high-capacity ammunition clips. And the presidential race is moving the spotlight from the economy to foreign policy. It's no surprise that President Obama and Mitt Romney are taking starkly different positions. ABC's Karen Travers has the latest. Good morning to you, Karen. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Paula. It was a rare break from all the economic talk. This week, President Obama and Mitt Romney are trading jabs over foreign policy. The number one priority for Americans right now is the economy. But this week, the campaign focus has shifted. In remarks to the Veterans of Foreign Wars National Convention, Mitt Romney issued a scathing indictment of President Obama's foreign policy. We haven't seen much in the president's first term that inspires confidence in a second. Mitt Romney's in Europe this week, the first foreign trip of his candidacy. He'll make stops in the United Kingdom, Israel, and Poland. Romney's expected to leave the attacks against the president behind, but before he left, he got in some tough jabs. He has given trust where it is not earned, insult where it was not deserved, and apology where it is not due. Four years ago, I made you a promise. I pledged to take the fight to our enemies and renew our leadership in the world. As president, that's what I've done. But unlike Romney, the president never mentioned his rival by name. But given the criticism that Romney's launched against the president over his timetable for withdrawal in Afghanistan, it was clear who the president was referring to. When you're commander-in-chief, you owe the troops a plan. You owe the country a plan. And that includes recognizing not just when to begin wars, but also how to end them. The Romney campaign calls the European trip a learning opportunity, not a chance for him to present his foreign policy. But the Obama campaign dismissed it as just a bunch of photo ops and fundraisers. Robin Paula, back to you. Mm, thank you, Karen. But the wars are so unpopular and have been for so long, it's hard to believe that a majority of the country will fault the president for setting timelines to bring our troops back home. Mm. I don't see how that's a losing point, no. considering what the polls show. In the polls, I mean, it's going to be different tomorrow than it is, you know, in three days. It's a very, very volatile, of course. Mitt Romney's winning on economics. The president continues to win on likability. And typically, I think it's 70 percent of the time, I sound like a line from, what is that, Anchorman? 70 percent of the time, it works all the time. <laughs> uh, when there's a stat, though, they say 70 percent. <laughs> No, you recover after that. Paul is a math on. major. Studies show that the more likable candidate wins 70% or more of public elections. So there you have it. Well, the country does vote on who they, they like, for better or worse. I mean, we're, we're superficial sometimes in our I'd voting. Vote for Ron it's, the, it's, it, it's the beer test. You know what I mean? Who do you grab a beer with? So we'll see, though. Like you said, miles to go. No one knows for sure just yet. But that was 70% <laughs> of the time it works. 100%. 60% of the time. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Now we turn to some serious news this morning. It's a Syria, and new reports of violence are now pouring in from that country's largest city. President Bashar Assad's forces are now pounding rebels in Aleppo, unleashing airstrikes. The BBC's Ian Panel is there. We joined a convoy on a highly dangerous mission to Aleppo, driving around army checkpoints, sneaking along back roads, headlights off, passing under the nose of government troops, and into Syria's second city, where the insurgency has found its loudest voice. And the battle is at its most fierce. By daylight, rebel snipers take to the roofs, copying army tactics. It was another day of intensive fighting as the fighters try to extend their control. Losing Aleppo would be a potentially fatal blow to President Assad, and the fight back began. With helicopter gunships firing at rebel positions. But what happened next marked a dramatic escalation. For the first time, fighter jets took to the skies, arcing through the air and strafing the ground. A mark of how desperate the government's become. Ian Panel, BBC News, in Aleppo City. Oh. Unbelievable access there. And now to a potentially deadly defect found in popular baby strollers. Nearly a quarter 
of a million peg perigo strollers are being recalled. A child's head could get stuck between a seat and the tray, posing a strangulation risk. The defect is blamed on at least one death. The strollers recalled were made between 2004 and 2007. So parents, if you own one of these strollers, make sure you contact the manufacturer. The onus is upon you to make that initial contact. Apple is releasing an upgraded Macintosh operating system today. It is called Mountain Lion, and it's only available as a digital download, no disks or memory sticks. The company says Mountain Lion has more than 200 new features, including the integration of both Twitter and Facebook. And this upgrade costs 20 bucks, $10 less than the last one. A suburban Detroit family is fighting to keep their beloved pet, but neighbors are crying Foul. Meet Waffle the Rooster. His owners, his owners insist he's part of the family, just like the cat and the dog. And a judge agreed, actually, allowing Waffle to stay in the home despite a town ordinance against keeping farm animals. That's not fine with neighbors, though. They say Waffle crows at any time of day, so they are appealing.